name is Edward Neff. Okay. And what have you brought to the Greenhouse today? I brought pictures of the schools in Sunbury, uh, pictures of the Hotel Neff, and pictures of the baseball team that used to be a professional baseball team here. Well, I know I went to a lot of baseball games at the field. Uh, I was there the night they announced Babe Ruth died. Uh, I saw Willie Mays play. I saw a number of big league baseball players play there. Uh, the schools are ones I went to. Uh, one is the uh, elementary school, the Rohrbach School, which is now a parking lot. Uh, the old high school which is this building right here, which is the library now. Uh, the middle school is now closed, or junior high school, became the middle school and is now closed. And uh, the new high, which is what it's called, it was a fourth ward. Uh, my senior year, we went from the old main to high school to that building because of it starting to collapse. And That was in 1955. The Neff Hotel uh, was Washington Tavern, Washington House. Originally, my great grandfather purchased it in 18, about 1866. Uh, tore the building down in about 1883, and rebuilt it with a brick building. In 1922, my father, added, father and uncle, added two stories to it: the fourth to the fifth floor. And in 1929, right before the stock market crash, they added the sixth floor, which was the roof garden. The roof garden only lasted until about 1937. Uh, just never went over. Uh, basically, one of the reasons was that the elevator only went to the fifth floor, so everybody had to walk to the sixth floor. Uh, the hotel remained in the Neff family for about 102 years. So about 1860 or yeah, 1968, and uh, is now torn down as the bank at Second and Market Street on that property. How did you find all this out? Because I was the last owner of the hotel. Oh, so you actually own the hotel? Mm -hmm. the last three and a half years. Unfortunately, the Holiday Inn came along and destroyed it. Mostly all my life. I lived in the hotel my first 12 years. Uh, I was up in Tawanda for three and a half years managing a theater in Bloomsburg for a year and uh, Williamsport for a year managing movie theaters. I'm from oh, you are? Well, I'm from Baltimore. Oh, yeah. That's SRU. So Sorry to like, <laughs> this can't like be used in our group, but that's so interesting. I just went by there yesterday. Really? I drive cars for Nissan. Okay. And I was up to Sayer yesterday to pick up a car. And in fact, Monday too. Okay. So I went by up to up 220, mm -hmm. right through uh, M Milan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to sell. I had a part-time job selling candy and cigarettes, and I'd go over to Smithfield and Ulster and those towns. There's little stores in there, and I'd sell to them. That was back in the 60s. That's so interesting. So you managed the Keystone, Keystone Theater for three and a half years. Wow. And what, what years were those? 1960 to 1964. Okay. So I'm a little older than Lester. <laughs> Lester thinks he's Sorry my age. Sorry to derail no, the interview okay. about Sunbury. Here we are talking <laughs> about the northern tier. <laughs> yeah, like I was up there yesterday. That's so cool. Now we tried, we came back <laughs> differently. We came back, went over to 15 and down 15. Okay. The guy told us up there it would be quicker. Well, it, you drive quicker. Okay. But it's but about a half, it was about a half hour to get to it. So it, it didn't save any time. Except when we came down Monday, we were buying two big trucks and about five cars from Dushore on down uh -huh. for about 20 miles. Oh, my gosh. You know, sometimes it was 10 miles an hour. Uh-huh. So. I can imagine. You know, I've been stuck behind cars like that coming back to school being like, <laughs> Sorry, you can, okay. you can carry on. I 
I guess we okay. should maybe discuss more about Sunday. Okay. <laughs> Could you tell us about um, the last week of the hotel? Like, was that challenging for you? <laughs> I mean, obviously. Our business was just going, about? going, going downhill. Uh, between the Neff and the Edison, we had 150 rooms to rent uh, on a daily basis. The uh, Holiday Inn came out with 150 rooms, which were bigger, modern, and they were across the river. It's no longer the Holiday Inn, but it's uh, right behind Bob Evans, right in there, you know, the motel, the Connor Lodge, whatever it is now. But that was the Holiday Inn. It was brand new. And they took our salesmen away from us. They took our bar business away. They took the restaurant business away. And my brother bailed out, and he was the manager for years. And then I bought uh, my uncle's share, and in three and a half years, it was it was gone. We just couldn't make it go. Did your family spend money like the Edison Hotel? Did your family own that? No, no, no. That's no, that's uh, Another hotel in town. No. It's still open today. They weathered the storm, and Donald Morgan really brought that back. Uh, he former pastor, and then became mayor, and then became hotel owner. He uh, did a tremendous food business, and really built a tremendous food business there. And uh, that's going on today. Uh, if you've ever eaten a meal at the Edison on, on Sundays, uh, they have a tremendous little uh, family-type food or uh, servings of ham, turkey, chicken. You know, but it's good. And so they've been able to hold on. At that time, when we had the hotel, we were getting like six dollars a night for a room. Six dollars, seven dollars. All the incomes are fifteen to twenty dollars, and still took our business. Uh, but we had little rooms. They, this was a, a railroad area. Area, you had a lot of railroads unloading in town here, and you had a lot of need for rooms in the eighteen hundreds, early part of the century. And uh, that went. But the salesmen from Wise's and Rand Derrick's is what supported us for years, and we lost it. Well, that happened. Then somebody else bought it, and they tried to make a go of it as a Fort Augusta house, uh, and they last about four years, and then they lost it. And then it became a slum house for a few years until he, he wouldn't do any repairs, and the, the roof leaked, and the water came down through and ended up destroying it, and then Lentini bought it. And he tore the building down, sold the property to the bank, and they built the bank. Yes. Changed names a couple of times, but it's still there. Well, it was a part of the city for 102 years. You know, it, uh, at one time it was the most modern hotel in central mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. It was advertised as, but that was that was back in the 20s. You know when these. These floors were added. They were bigger rooms, and they were all had private baths. Mm -hmm. You know, the first floor rooms, the first two rooms that had floors in it, they had uh, communal uh, bathrooms. You know, they had a bathroom in the hall, and you went and used it. And the only thing you had in your room was a sink. And the way they were, small rooms, closets are bigger than those rooms today. And we just couldn't compete. And it happened. Felt bad at the time, but we wouldn't have passed fire laws today anyhow because we had wooden floors and they're a no-no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any final thoughts for people watching TV? Not really. It was a good old town. It was not, not quite as it used to be. The shopping center is gone, and uh, probably will never be back. We used, to, you know, this was a major shopping center here. You had Grants and Woolworths and Pennies and Newberries and 
Montgomery Wards and Sears and all of them were downtown here. And it was about five shoe stores, five women's clothing stores. It was Friday night, Saturday nights. You couldn't move on Market Street. The theater, they had two theaters, the Strand and the Rialto. And I started at the Strand when I started in the theater position. And uh, they were just mobbed, you know. But then TV came along and whacked them. Progress.